ready. Mm-mm-mm. I guess first off, since it's been a while since we've talked to you, just how are you feeling physically? Where do you feel that you're at? Uh, I feel like I'm back. Uh, I got like a long time to recover and uh, just working with my teammates to get my mental back right. That's really what I'm trying to do. It was difficult with that whole process last year. Uh, Same now dealing with those injuries and not being able to play. It was real difficult because I've never been hurt. So that was like the first time I've really been hurt where I missed time. Like I said, mentally, that's just like the hardest thing, really. But I feel like I've got my confidence back and I feel good. Aaron, you come back, come into this year feeling almost like, like this is your rookie year, or did you learn a lot last year even when you couldn't play? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's still my rookie year because I didn't play a lot, but like I learned a lot mentally, and uh, I feel like it's my second year, like mentally, and just knowing like the game and like all logistics, but like physically, I feel like it's my rookie year again because I didn't play a lot. Knowing that they've pretty much been on record saying they expect you to be the number one guy and to lead that entire group, so is that difficult in the sense of you had the year off, but now this is what is expected of you? Uh, I mean, it's going to be challenging. I don't feel like it's going to be that difficult, though. I feel like I can lead by example more than just vocally. Everybody, the way NFL treats injuries, a lot of stuff isn't released and information we don't have. So can you clear up at all exactly what happened with last year? It seemed like you would be back in a couple of weeks, and then it just never turned out that way. Yeah, I mean, it just lingered. Uh, we thought it would get back better by, like, taking reps off, but it just kept getting worse, so I just fixed it. Do you have to have surgery or? Yeah, I have surgery. What has it been like uh, getting used to, obviously, a, a bunch of different guys around you in the cornerback room? What has that been, just kind of meshing with those guys, getting used to a bunch yeah, of Yeah, I mean, it's just like college when you get a new set of guys, you get a new room uh, when people leave. So I feel like I can always cope with people. When you got people that are on the same mission, got the same goals or similar goals, like it's kind of easy to cope with. When you go through such a challenging year as last year was, which is adversity, what do you learn just about people in your life, you know, who's there for you through the tough times? And I guess what did you learn from that standpoint as you worked through some of those issues? Honestly, I feel like what I learned is there are people there for you, but at the end of the day, you got to be there for yourself because you're the only one that can mentally prepare yourself to come back from something. Like you were fully ready to be back, like that you were yourself, or did you still not feel right at that point? No, I didn't feel right, and I feel like that played a part in lingering injury too, because mentally I wasn't there all the way. The, the Jets game, I think it was, was a pretty strong game for you. It seemed like you didn't yeah. think after that game that you were taken off. No, I mean I feel like I played all right, but I feel like I could play way better. Like watching film, like I had a couple good plays, but I had a lot of bad plays too. Uh, I feel like it suits me well. We play press a lot, just like I did in college. I mean, that's basically the defense for the corners, play press man, lock your man down. What's been your whole observation of the whole vibe here with the new coaching staff and just kind of the direction that they're going? Uh, They're all in, and there's no blaming and complaining or anything. We handle ours and take responsibility for everything and hold everybody accountable to the highest standard. After seeing a team last year that had been in the playoffs the year before wind up going six and ten and kind of, you know, not finish anywhere near what they wanted to be, did you learn from that too? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just seeing the way like the whole thing was just set up, like it wasn't how we are now. People weren't all together as one. Everybody was like kind of just in their own lane. Like I feel like we're all in one lane right now. Besides even the, the injury part of it, I mean. Ohio State, man, you didn't lose very many games. Yeah. So to be on a team that all of a sudden was losing games, is that part of the hard part too? Yeah. I mean, you go from a winning program and then that you see the difference. You see why it happened. You know why it happened because you were on a winning team. So you know what it takes to win and why you lost. Any specific reason for changing from 22 to 21? Melvin asked for 22. 21 was my high school number, though. Not too much into it. It really doesn't matter too much now, but... The shin injury, did it happen at mini camp last year? Was it OTAs or September 4? When did that first surface? Yeah, it was like around that same time. A couple more guys. You said you've never been injured to go through that and the surgery. Were there times of doubt? Who, who took you through that part of it? Guys who had been injured before, who had gone through that? Like who kind of led you through that for a guy who had never been injured? Yeah, I mean, I just talked to like multiple people. Like Carl, he said he got hurt last year or his rookie year. 
And then uh, I actually talked to my teammate from college, Marshawn, because he had a lot of hamstring problems. And I just, like, talked to people that I knew who got hurt and asked them what did they do to, like, come back from it. Do you look at this year as a year to, to, to get out there and, 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 and prove people wrong and have a chip on your shoulder, or are you just worried about yourself and not worried about any of that stuff? I mean, I'm not worried about it. Of course, I take it into account. Like, I have a chip on my shoulder. I don't really try to prove people wrong, though. I'm really, like, worried about myself and, like, getting back mentally. You guys brought some vets in and, and Hall and Melvin and Gilchrist. What's your first impression on those guys? What have they brought to the mix this year? They bring a lot to it. They're all in. Like I said, like, we all are on on the same page. And when you're all on the same page and you can talk to people, like, we talk about football on and off the field, like, regular conversation and when you're always talking about things that get better like you always like have that teammate that you can talk to about anything like personal and on the football level it just like elevates your game. Sean has spoken about the expectations he has for himself you know wanting to show he's a top cornerback in this league yeah. what does that do when you play across a guy like that and I imagine it's going both ways where you have some high goals as well for your own play. Yeah it just challenges you makes you compete harder and just trying to be the best, like, that's going to, like, make your game better. Last one. All set? Thank you. Thank you.
Good to see everybody. I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. It's uh, nice to have some sunshine here in Alameda. What are some of the positives that you can take out of day one? I know it's, it's very early, but also what are some of the negatives that you also saw out there that need to be worked on? Well, a lot of situations, obviously. Today I had a two-minute drill. Um, the quarterback, Carr, is, is very impressive today again. He's showing very good command of the offense, I think. Uh, the first team offense is doing some very good things, uh, running and passing. I like where our defense is going. It's pleased, really, with uh, the guys at the top of the depth chart. I thought Panero kicked the ball very well. Both our rookie specialists punted the ball extremely well. Some of our backup players got to pick it up. And uh, I think that's probably a standard line around the league this time of year. Jerry, I was just talking about how it took a little bit of time for him to get mentally back after missing all the time last year. How have you seen his confidence sort of grow during this offseason? Oh, it's grown tremendously. I, I give um, our secondary coach, Coach Ansley, a lot of credit. He spent a lot of time behind the scenes with Conley. It's been a dark, uh, dark world that he's been in, this young man. He's had a terrible injury he had to rehab from. He's had to change coaches, learn a new system. And uh, it's been a slow, steady process, but... Man, is he a good player. And when he's feeling good, you can see why we picked him number one overall. Do you guys expect Khalil to show up this week? And any, any concern that their workouts are mandatory now that he's missing? I don't know. I uh, just hope so. You know, it's one of the big reasons I came here is to coach that man. But uh, I don't want to speculate. There's a lot of guys in the league, several players that are in a similar situation. We're just uh, trying to resolve it as soon as possible. And in the meantime, coach the players that are here. You guys have been very diplomatic in terms of handling Khalil's situation. I really want to talk about the players who aren't here. That being said, today was the first mandatory day he's missed. It's under the it's, the team has the ability to find a player for any unexcused absence. Will he be fined? <laughs> I just move on with the questions. I, you know, I'm not going to get into what we're going to do. Uh, that's 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 our business, honestly, and uh, we'll deal with it accordingly. We're hoping to get the man signed, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, yesterday, Frosty and, and Tuba. What are you seeing those two guys, and why did you bring them in? Well, Rucker is uh, a guy that's been a, a very good physical football player uh, at multiple positions for a long time and has history with Gunther. That's obvious. But, you know, he started a lot of games for Arizona last season. His versatility and leadership is outstanding. And, you know, when you have Arden Key and you have Hurst and you've got P.J. Hall, it helps when you have a veteran presence in every room. And Rucker will help us do that. I really like this guy. Uh, Ataba Rubin is another mammoth nose tackle. We needed depth there. Vander Doze is not practicing. Don't know when he will practice. Uh, Mario Edwards has had some injuries, hasn't practiced a lot. Uh, so Rubin gives us another big guy uh, that can work inside and keep our linebackers clean and be a contender to help our team. We're uh... You got through the OTAs and everything, and you were headed to, and now we're at mini camps. So you, have you, did you see the progress that you wanted to see from the start of OTAs until now? Yeah, I have. I really have. I'm, I'm really happy. You know, we got a lot to prove yet. We're a long way off, but we've laid a very good foundation. We've added a lot of new players. We felt like we needed to do that. This roster needed help, and we went out and helped ourselves, I think. A lot of these players came, uh, I think, uh, with very little signing bonus. They came almost, some of them I, I think would play for nothing. And that's the attitude that we need here. Uh, we need competition, we need depth, we need leadership, we need players. Hard, tough football players. And uh, I think that's what the Oakland Raider franchise is built around. And uh, we have made progress. We've laid a foundation. And now it's, uh, it's up, up to us to continue to stack days together, get some momentum, and go to training camp and get ready for the regular season. These three days right now in any way like a, a dry run for training camp? Is, it, is this a different setup these three days than, say, the OTAs were? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, this, this, this uh, way we practice nowadays is tough. I mean, you know, you, you're not allowed to have any contact. You're not allowed to play bump and run. You're not allowed to be on the ground. Uh, you you got to be very careful. And you, it's hard to do. It's hard to do when you're trying to make a football team. Uh, it's hard for Marshawn Lynch to play his kind of game in this style of football. Doug Martin, same thing. Osemele. Uh, we're, we're trying to teach our pass protection, our system of offense, our entry of blitz on defense, but you don't want the collision. So most of this is timing and assignments, timing and assignments, and uh, trying to bring men together 
where they can uh, get familiar with one another. What's your, what's your take when you see a little scuffle like he had out there? Do you, does that annoy you that guys are getting into it? Do you like some of the aggressiveness? Or do you, how do you kind of feel when you see? Well, we haven't had that. You know, we, we really have stressed the etiquette that you have to have to be uh, an Oakland Raider. We have to work against each other. We got to practice against each other uh, every day. Uh, I didn't like what happened today, particularly in the situation. You know, you hear all this situational football talk around the league. We're in a two-minute drill to win the game, and we got a guy ejected for fighting. That's a 15-yard penalty, and Eddie Pinero uh, ended their day with a game-winning field goal. So I'd hate to fly back from London or wherever the hell we got to play, Miami or all these road trips we got, losing a game like that. So sorry for getting unglued. Do you, do you find uh, in the previous question the sense that it's not going fast enough for you, that you have to actually hold back because of all the rules and everything you have to deal no, with? No, it's, it's, it's the same for everybody. You have to adapt. We've practiced in shorts when I coached before. It's, this is not my first rodeo. I'm just saying at the end of the off-season program, guys are tired of it. They're ready to, they're ready to get ready for training camp and play some real football. And um, it's tough. And we tell the defense, don't bat balls down. We tell the offense, you know, don't be too aggressive and chop block and pass protection. There's a lot of rules of etiquette that we have to keep coaching and talking about. It gets tough, and the players get tired of it. Out of practice, so the first time we get to talk to you since we learned the Lions are going to be practicing against you. Um, how did that come about? Do you have a relationship with Patricia, or was it how exactly did you guys, the Lions, come together to do this? Yeah, I like Matt Patricia a lot. I had a lot of respect for him. I've spent time with him, um, obviously, when I was in my previous role. Um, he's, a, he's a heck of a guy. He's a great coach. I trust him. I think he trusts how we want to uh, get better and improve as a football team on both ends. And um, there'll be specific situations. A lot of it will be controlled. But uh, they'll give us an opportunity to see a different opponent, uh, give us an opportunity to see a different style of offense and defense. And our young players will get a chance to um, hopefully gain some confidence by playing against somebody else before they really have to under the lights. In the position battle between Pinero and Tavecchio, how much can be determined here in practice and how much of it will have to wait until – actual game like atmospheres in the preseason yeah it'll be uh it'll be a, a battle into camp Tavecchio's had a heck of a camp it just so happens that it was eddie's turn to kick today so uh we're not going one kick here one kick there taking turns and rotating it's Tavecchio's day it's panero's day it allows these guys to mentally uh go out there and be better uh instead of rotating but uh it's going to be a battle the young kid can kick the ball and Tavecchio's proven he's an nfl kicker Emily a couple of minutes ago, um, he came here two years ago and pretty much changed the entire um, aggressiveness of the offensive line, just his presence, it seemed like. What's been your observation of him coaching him now? Yeah, I like him a lot, obviously. Um, you know, those three guys inside are a pleasure to be around. Can't say enough about the physicality of Assembly. He's rare that way. Uh, the guy in the pivot is a sensational player now. Rodney Hudson makes us go. He's the straw that stirs the drink. This guy's a great athlete, smart, doesn't miss a snap, doesn't miss a call, uh, and Gabe Jackson is the most underrated guard. For him not to be in the Pro Bowl, there really should be an investigation, honestly. We got three really good players in there, and it's important that these young tackles, whoever it's going to be, uh, Donald Penn, who's it going to be at left tackle, at right tackle, uh, we've got to catch up to them because if we do, we got a chance. Miller and Arden Key seem to be swapping some pretty good reps against each other, each of them having their own victories along the way. What have you seen from that matchup of two young players getting into the mix? Yeah, we like them both. We like uh, Colt Miller a lot. You know, what we're doing with him right now, with all the audibles, all the check with me's, all the different speeds that we're playing with, it's taxing on a young guy. He's an underclassman out of UCLA, hasn't really been in a huddle very often. But he is a great athlete. He's done a hell of a job for us. And Arden Key has is, is, is got some special pass rush ability. And um, we expect those two guys to make each other better uh, as we move forward. We like both those players. Uh, it looked like uh, Marcus Gilchrist and a couple other guys weren't um, out there. Were any of the absences injured? Yeah, they were out there today. Gilchrist uh, had a slight uh, calf strain, so we held him out. He's, he's been arguably our best safety all camp. He's extremely versatile, can play nickel, can play free, can play strong. Uh, he's a Versace guy on special teams, and 
Uh, that was more of a precautionary matter. Uh, I think Garyon is okay. We don't really have any uh, injuries of significance to really report to you today. Obi's doing more since the last time we talked. To Obi's him. doing more. Yeah, he is. He's out there more. He's out there more. He's getting close to being all the way back. So uh, as he and Conley both have had some dark, quiet moments with the trainer, and uh, I think his confidence is growing. I saw him pull the trigger and really get off the hash and move the other day, and you see the 4-4 speed that uh, is talked about. But he's got a lot of ground to make up. He's missed a lot of work, and it's competitive back there. The guy that's really been stunning for us is Eric Harris. You know, I'm doing my research on this guy. Who is this cat? This guy's played really good football for us. And um, I don't care what round they are coming from. This kid is, is really rising to the top right now. Coach, uh, Derek Johnson has uh, been with the team for a little bit over a month now. So um, from what you've seen through the practices and just being around him, uh, what's really stood out for him as he's joined the team? Well, his presence stands out. It has a feel to the defense. You know, in the walkthroughs, during stretch, the confidence. I think the bar raises when you get a guy of that status in this league. Um, quick study, learn the defense. He recognizes formations. He can cover. Uh, I still think he's got some thump in that body. And I give him a lot of credit. The man got married last weekend, gets married, and flies back for an OTA the next day. Now, if you don't like that, you don't like their, you don't like football. So his dedication to the game is spectacular. And he's what we need. He's what we need. We need a presence in the middle of our defense. Uh, it's been a turnstile, the linebacker position here for a long time. And uh, hopefully uh, he can help develop uh, Morrow, Mark Kelly, two young guys that I think could benefit from watching them. Tom Cable brought, brought two guys as the line coach, especially with the young tackles that you, you're trying to develop. Yeah, he brings us not only experience, championship experience, head coaching experience, a lot of versatility. He's, he's, he's coached in a lot of different schemes, different runners, different quarterbacks, different head coaches. He's, he's versatile. He can adapt. But he's a tough guy. You know, and usually the tough coaches, they, they help develop tough lines. And uh, the thing I love about Cable is he's a great teacher. You know, you can go down and sit in an offensive line meeting for 30 minutes, and he can uh, he can – coach about three days worth of information he's always ready he's sharp but he's a really good teacher and he's into it every day and he's a tough guy we, we like him we were talking about your rookie defensive lineman last week and he said although they're only in shorts he feels like over this this point in his career he can really tell a lot even still about certain guys what are you able to tell albeit in shorts on mo and pj and arden well, it's the same thing as Paul said. You can tell in shorts. I mean, it's, it really favors the defense in some ways because uh, every play is a pass. And we don't have a lot of running plays. We ran it more today than we did in the last three practices combined. Um, so the offense is always retreating up front. But you can tell guys that can cover grass, that have some pass rush arsenal, they have the speed to get the edge, they have some power to run over you. And they're quick studies, and they're in great shape. What I'm really impressed with is the conditioning of our young draft choices. They haven't missed a second, and we have worked the hell out of these guys. We pushed them hard. Uh, so I like that a lot. They all seem to like football. A lot of young guys today, you know, they're not quite sure how much they like OTAs and uh, long eight-hour days. You know, they're used to the NCAA where it's a little bit different. But um, there's a lot to like so far. You've seen from, uh, from Carl Joseph so far. Are there <clears throat> ways you can see you can use him where he's not, you know, he, he had issues when he's isolated on these 6'6 six, six tight ends sometimes? Yeah, well, it's tough. I mean, he's, he's going to have to be isolated on him again in certain coverages against certain formations. That might happen again. But, you know, he's, he's showing up around the ball. He's, he's touching off. We, we chart how many times each defender gets to the ball. And I would say... Uh, Carl leads our team in getting to the ball. So his effort's been outstanding. He's uh, still learning this defense. And fortunately for him, he can sit in the meeting with Leon Hall, Reggie Nelson, guys that have had a lot of history with Gunther. And I think as that improves, he'll improve. But, you know, we're not going to change genetics. You know, there's going to be times where um, he's, he's, he's in a tough matchup. That's, that's just the way it's going to be. Are taking over the offense and showing that he's really grasping the system. Has anyone else on that side of the ball stood out to you about you know their leadership or just 
them in the, the wide receivers or in the offensive line? Yeah, we had a number of guys. Jordy Nelson has been really good behind the scenes, uh, playing multiple positions. Um, Jared Cook's had a great camp. You know, I did not know Jared Cook um, moved like that. I knew he had very good pass receiving skills, but we can line him up at a lot of different places now. He's been really sharp, um, and we've asked him to do a lot. And the running backs have, have probably stood out the most. Of one position group, Doug Martin, Marshawn Lynch, Jalen Richard can play, DeAndre can play, and this young Chris Warren kid out of Texas is a good player. And I, I like Keith Smith. That, that has been a real good group, polished. Haven't made a lot of mistakes, and they practice hard. You saw you guys let go Hackenberg. How would you evaluate the guys you have behind Derek right now? Yeah, he's disappointed in uh, you know, not really giving Christian the opportunity to go to camp. Uh, like I said, we, we felt we needed to add a couple defensive linemen. We ran out of numbers, and that's not good at that position heading into camp. Um, it's hard to get one guy ready right now let alone two and three. But Connor Cook's game is, is moving up. He's doing better. He still, I think, uh, has some rough edges that he can improve. Uh, E.J. Manuel's an athletic guy. He's, he's made some strides. But right now, it's, it's Derek Carr, and it's wide open after that. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh. Questions, guys? What Marion it? Conley said that uh, you helped him out quite a bit with, uh, with the fact that you had a similar situation coming in with the injury in your rookie year and he did as well. What did you, what did you guys have? What did you say to him? Um, I just know how, how you know how hard it is um, coming in a high draft pick first round, and um, he he battled through some injury. Told him no, you know um, you know just, just gotta keep his head up, keep fighting through it. Um, you know it's a lot of pressure um, from from outside sources and pressure you put on yourself as well coming in being drafted high. So you know just keep battling through it, and um, you know when you're ready, you're gonna be ready. Who approached whom in that situation, and how did he receive the information? Um. You know, I, I think it was in more so who approached, who was just uh, noticing that, uh, you know, you know he's coming in, a uh, young guy. I, I was in the same position the year before and, uh, you know, just talking. And we, we chopped it up a few times. And I knew that he was a guy that, you know, I, I needed to take kind under my wing and, and kind of, um, you know, give him. I, I was still young myself, but, you know, the knowledge I gained from my first year, uh, battling through the same things and that I could kind of pass on. And as teammates, you guys understand that. That being said, to not have Khalil out there, just that presence that isn't out there, what's that been like? Um, I mean, you, you, you can't replace Khalil. Um, um, we, we know, you know, what he's, he's doing. And, uh, you know, we respect it. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, I think the other guys have done a, a good job stepping up and um, learning the system like we all, everybody else have been. And, um, you know, uh, when he's ready to come back, you know, we'll be ready for him. And, you know, we can't replace a guy like that. You said you were one of the guys he consulted before signing Daryl Worley just because of West Virginia and some of the, you know, past issue he had a couple months ago. What are you guys getting in him? Um, Man, he's, uh, I knew he'd come in and uh, help us at that position. Um, we need some help in that position. And um, uh, when, when he asked me about him, I was excited because, uh, you know, that's my brother. We played almost all our years in college together. And uh, so when he asked me, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I, signed, I co-signed for him immediately. And um, I was excited. I knew he'd come in and help us. He's, he's a heck of a player. What do you think about the uh – the whole, the whole new defensive scheme, Gunther, the way they want you to play, does it suit you? And do you think that you're pretty excited about the way things look? Yeah, I'm excited, man. Um, it's it's a fun defense to play in. And I, uh, 
thing I love about it is that he, he knows it like the back of his hand. Um, he coaches very well. Um, uh, it's aggressive, uh, a lot of different moving parts, and um, it, it allows us to make plays, um, play fast, make plays, and attack from a lot of different uh, positions. John said that he, they, they chart who's closest to the ball every day. It's one of the things they do constantly. And he said you're, you've been probably the most of anybody at being around the ball. Is that an indication that you're picking up this defense fast or you still can pick up more? Or what? Oh, no, I think I'm, I'm learning every day. Um, you know, uh, so having guys like Reggie and uh, um, a lot of more veteran guys than we've had previous years, I think that's helped me also. But um, guys like uh, – Emmanuel, uh, to hear those guys, man, having veteran linebackers that, that know that defense um, is help a lot. So I'm still learning. And, uh, you know, uh, I think it's also uh, something he told me, you know, uh, he, he emphasized, he told me before OTA that, you know, I need you to get to the ball. So um, that's something I take pride in. Uh, good. Yeah. What does having a guy like Derek Johnson in the middle of defense do for everyone else is to have that veteran presence? I think it allowed us to play with confidence, knowing that we got a middle linebacker that knows we um all three actually, you know, they, they know it. They're veteran guys, they they've been around the league for a while. They they've they know that defense. So uh, you know, I think that that, that trickles down to everybody else, uh, especially in the back end. We have confidence that they can make the checks, make the calls and it just allows us to play more so than having to think and, and make checks. Has Gruden been different or the same or what you expected on a day to day basis? Uh, can you ask that question again? Been different or what you expected on a day-to-day basis as a coach dealing with them all that? Expected. I, I <laughs> what did you expect? <laughs> I love him. I love him, man. Um, he's a he's he brings a lot of energy every day. Um, straightforward guy, man. He he tells you exactly what he expects out of you. Um, there's nothing to hide. Uh, uh and uh, man, it's fun, man. I'm excited. I'm excited the way the way he has brought the team together. Um, you can tell. Um, I'm sure you guys can tell. Uh, I notice it. You know the the team chemistry out there. Um, I think that's something he takes pride in, just the way he he brings us together. A couple more guys. Working with uh, Marcus uh, Gilchrist, and what does he bring to the table for the? Uh, he's okay. smart. Smart. Um, versatile. He can play play nickel, play safety. Um, having a guy like that in the back end um, also add a lot of uh, competition and depth to our position. I think uh, it helps. It helps everybody. You know, everybody in the room um, help us to compete. Um, I think it's kind of bringing the best out of everybody. Derek Anthony. He's a he's a he's a great coach, man. Uh, he's I almost forgot. I was like, who are you talking about? <laughs> Y'all, you said that like a play, like he's a player. You didn't say coach, coach Derek is. Uh, he's a man. He's he's a great coach, man. Uh, he he's hard on us. Uh, um, he's very uh, detail oriented. You know, he, he he's all about the little details. Him and Coach Jim both. Um, you know, they're they're some great coaches, man. And I think uh, that's what we need in that back end. They uh, they 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 work very well together. Um, and how they bring the whole secondary uh, secondary together. You had an interception today in practice. We're talking to Rashawn last week, and he talked about that's something that, as a whole defense, something that is a focus, a point of emphasis, just getting more takeaways. Yeah. How can that start here in the spring like what can you guys do here in the spring just to work toward that um i think just being around the ball uh first of all uh learning learning our responsibilities that's the first thing um and then that's just going you know this defense it allows you to make uh plays man there's so many different moving gadgets uh so many blitzes it's a very aggressive defense and um i think it allows us to play fast and be around the ball and make plays so um i think we just got to keep growing man keep growing we have a lot more, a lot of room for improvement but um man i think we way up here ahead of where we were last year around this time and um i'm excited i'm excited to see where we at when when we get to camp with a practice plan and then just change it, you know, change things on the fly to make people adjust and think on their feet. How beneficial is that going to be, you think? Uh, I think it gets us ready. It gets us ready for game-like situations. Um, uh, not not everything not being scripted. Um, it allows us to think, think on our feet, being able to make calls and um, play well to each other, communicate. Um, so I think, I think it's good for us. It's going to get us ready. 
Thanks, when you look back at your first two years, was it frustrating at all in terms of not being able to make the plays you made in college? Or how do you look back at your first two years as far as your impact and what you think it will be going forward, I guess? Um, it's frustrating to me because I have high expectations for myself. Um, I know there's a lot of plays that I miss that, you know, I wish that I could get back. And, uh, you know, but it's all part of growing. I think going into my third year, I have very high expectations for myself. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I definitely got to I, I definitely gotta elevate my game. Um, I got to be the player that they drafted me to be. Um, and I, I put that on myself. So I got a lot of expectation for myself this year. Um, I'm holding myself to that. So, uh, you know, I got just got to keep growing, keep learning from some of the older guys, Reggie, Leon, Marcus, um, and, and just keep getting better, man. Um, I think we, we are, we, we're in a good spot right now. I'm excited to where we headed, where we at right now. And, um, and we, we're going to have a real good team. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You probably as much as anybody rely on physicality as part of your game. How in the spring, and obviously it's a lot going on with this new offense, but how in the spring can you really hone in to elevate your game and improve the areas that you want to focus on? Um, I think uh, physically I'm being pushed right now. Uh, Tom Cable, uh, he's doing a really good job of straining our brains, as they like to say. Uh, <clears throat> so with like all the new code words and Things constantly changing, I think mentally is where my game's going to improve the most. And so far, just this new offense? Uh, it's been great. I feel like we have a lot of versatility. Uh, defense can't cheat as much because we, uh, we change things up with code words and, and different things like that. So I feel pretty good uh, with the way things are going. What have been your impressions of the two rookie tackles? I'm really impressed. Uh, phenomenal, actually, today. Brandon stood up for himself, so that was really cool to see. Um, you always want to see that, you know, you worry about a guy's toughness. So, um, he's a tough kid. He's been playing well. He's really intelligent, uh, really smart. Colton as well is very intelligent, uh, very minimal MAs, also tough. I've been kind of trying to toughen him, toughen him up a little bit in drills and he's pretty solid. So I think we, uh, we got, we got, we got some here, man. We got some guys. He was good. talking about how K-Ball is a great teacher. What, how would how have you seen that, and what, what what makes him so good at teaching you guys? Um, yeah, he's just like uh, like you said, he's a, he's a good teacher. He's just good at knowing different people, like their personalities, and kind of how to get to them. Like, you know, does a guy have a big ego? How can I like mess with him a little bit and then get him to pay attention to what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, uh, he just understands people. He's been doing it for so long. He understands like people's personality and their psychology or whatever. And uh, you know, he gets under there. He gets underneath that. And, you know, he also cares about your development off the field as well. And, uh, you know, you respect a guy like that. So when you have a guy like that that's teaching you, um, that's only going to help your growth and development on and off the field. You guys have a new scheme and some new coaches, but, but that interior line has a lot of continuity, you and Gabe and Rodney. For, does that help you during times of transition, given that you guys know each other so well and have operated so well? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's like anything uh, job-related, right? It's, uh, it's a team, and, uh, you know, it's all about accountability. So when you have guys that you can trust next to you, um, it just makes it that much better, you know, um, especially guys that you're friends with and, and guys that you uh, hang out with off the field and everything like that. It all ties together, you know, the whole teammate aspect of it. So uh, just having three guys... <clears throat> that you've been playing with for a while uh, as far as like chemistry and as far as like uh, elevating and, and getting to that next level of play and having another year together, that's always good. So I feel, I'm feeling pretty confident right now. Your impression has been a PJ and Mo so far? Uh, 
<clears throat> Mo's looking real good, man. Uh, I'm really impressed with Mo. Definitely got a steal with him. Uh, he's looking real good. He's going to be uh, good if he just keeps going. The sky's the limit for that guy. Uh, <clears throat> PJ's been looking good as well. Um, he's a good player. Uh, you know, some things to work on uh, with both of those guys because they're so young. They're, you know, still a little raw, but um, definitely uh, talented. Talks about how Carr's really taking command of the offense, obviously, what you want out of your quarterback. But have you seen any adjustments or anything from your perspective that's been different from years in the past? Um, I feel like he's more confident in his checks when he's uh, reading coverages. Uh, when safeties roll down like that, I just can kind of feel it uh, when he's making certain calls. So, uh, and then I can feel it too. Like I can see it. So it's like kind of like a communication thing. His communication is just a lot better when he sees like safeties rolling down and things like that when there's like a blitz coming off the edge and stuff like that. So I think that's something that I would say <clears throat> that's that's been better uh, so far. I mean, we're still uh, getting into it. It's still early, so there's still improvements to be made. But right now, I'm really happy with uh, with the way that things are looking. Were you guys talking about the previous plays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about a play where there was a guy, it was like a cross blitz coming in the middle with the linebackers, and he was kind of like, uh, talking about he wasn't sure if we saw it, you know, like communicating on, you know, body language, guys leaning forward and stuff like that. Because, you know, we have to like, on that particular play, we had to scat. So we had to like be alert on the blitz uh, in the A-gap. So he was just making sure that we saw that, um, which we did. So we're just like communicating. He was just like, you know, confidence and reassurance because it's a new system, right? You know, and he's a quarterback. He wants to be protected, make sure he's good. So that was, that's all we were talking about. Reputation for a long time as being, you know, um, Offensive guy, quarterbacks, passing game. But I, you know, the first time he was here, team led the league in rushing one of the years, and he was pretty adamant and, and about a stickler for being very tough and physical and being able to run the ball. And he did something that you've picked up right away from him. Oh, for sure. That's one of the first thing he, things he said coming up to me and Gabe was just like, I was so excited to come here to work with you guys because I love the way you guys run the ball, and we're going to keep running the ball, and we're going to make sure that we do that. So, um, you know, that obviously makes you feel good, makes you feel like you're a part of it. Um, I think that's going to be a big part of our game. I don't think we're going to be one-dimensional. We have all these checks and these different things and audibles for the receivers and stuff like that, but um, I don't think we're going to get away from the physicality whatsoever. Anything about Bruden surprise you? No, nah, he was everything I thought he would be, you know, just a high-intensity guy, um, excitement, the kind of the spark we needed, so it's been good. What have you picked up? And you have Mike Tyson, obviously, the first couple of years, and now you have okay, but What have you picked up uh, from both of them and the differences along the way? Um, I would say that <clears throat> with Cable, it's definitely one of those things where it's a, a challenge and a strange mentally. You know, he kind of wants to try and dick you, as he would say, you know, like kind of mess with you a little bit, um, you know, kind of see if he can catch you uh, with some trick questions and stuff like that and make sure you're actually studying and stuff like that. And uh, with Tyson, it was just kind of, you know, straightforward, uh, you know, coaching guys, maybe a little bit of baby in here and there, but. Um, just like tough coaching with Cable, so that's been good. As teammates, you guys respect the business side of the sports, and certainly don't want to talk about another teammate's business. That being said, how different is it out there without Khalil? Oh man, I haven't honestly. Uh, I haven't even been thinking about that at all. I mean, we have so much going on right now. It's a new system. Uh, we're worried about our development right now. I'm sure he's doing whatever he needs to do to be ready uh, when he comes back, but. Uh, right now it's just kind of one of those things where it's next man up at this point until he gets back. You know, he's a great player. Um, you know, my opinion, yes, of course, I think uh, we need to do whatever we can to get him back. He's, just, you know, a phenomenal guy. You don't come across talent like that. But uh, we haven't really even been uh, letting that really affect our preparation day in and day out. <clears throat>